Hey everyone, in this episode of the Online Nut Show, Corey's back on and he's going to show us how we could interact with WhatsApp and Twilio inside of an ASP.NET application. This should be really interesting, so make sure you stay tuned and then check it out. Hey everyone, welcome again to another episode of the On.NET Show. Um, today we're going to continue our conversation with my buddy Corey here from Twilio. And we're going to continue learning about all of the different things that we can add to our ASP.NET Core applications to really create those really rich customer experiences. Now, I know for me, a lot of my family, you know, my family lives in the Caribbean and I have folks that are like all over the world. And so one of the things that we use a lot to communicate is this app called WhatsApp. And, you know, some of you folks may or may not have used it before. But it's a big thing that we use for like sending messages and photos and you know my family sent me pdfs and things like that over there i don't know why but they do it um <laughs> but what corey's going to show us right now is how we could actually add that functionality to our website like we could integrate with whatsapp with twilio like how does how does that work yeah it's incredibly easy and so i'm so excited to be able to show this off to you all today um you know at twilio we care about connecting the world with code, right? And so being able to send an SMS should be as simple as being able to also send a message over WhatsApp. And thanks to the Twilio SDKs, it actually is almost the same. So I'm really excited to show this code off today. All right, cool. So what's the difference, if we talk really quickly about sending a message with WhatsApp versus sending something with SMS, right? Because they're just, they're just messaging things, right? But like are the protocols different? Is there a different level of security? Like what's what's the difference? Yeah, they're completely different channels. So if you think about sending an SMS, it's a traditional text message that you would get on your phone that's usually taken care of or uh, delivered or transported by the telecom operators. Versus if you send a message over WhatsApp, there's a different level of security on that message. The folks behind WhatsApp do a good bit to make sure that uh, the message you receive is not spam. There's a ton more protections there as well. Um, and so they're completely different channels, even though they seem pretty similar from a code perspective. Right. I think another good thing too is WhatsApp is free. Financially speaking, WhatsApp is free. And so from a business perspective, you know, if you want to communicate with customers and, you know, different clients and things like that, like that's one cost that I don't necessarily have to worry about, right? It makes it a little bit easier for me to reach out and just engage with people. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so one of the things that I've seen as I talk to different customers around the world is they love that we have support for WhatsApp because it is so simple to be able to use the Twilio API to message uh, their different customers in different countries, just based on the destination that the message is going to. So, Right, right. All right. So why don't we switch over to your desktop and let's see how we can plug these things together. Absolutely. All right, Corey. So we're taking a look at your screen now and I see like there's the Twilio sandbox that's open. I see your phone that you're showing here in Reflector and the Twilio Quest. So, so show me how, how exactly is this WhatsApp integration working? Yeah. So in order to get started, the first thing we have to do is send a message so that we can join a sandbox environment. And that sandbox is really important. Because that sandbox allows you to be able to send messages using the WhatsApp channel. Um, it gives you a developer environment that you can use. It helps to make sure that you're not sending spam, things of this regard. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I saw you just sent a message on your phone, and then I saw it like pop up here in the sandbox, right? Yeah, that's exactly correct. So now that I've sent that message, I was able to join the sandbox. And once I did, it the Twilio... Uh, a WhatsApp sandbox sent me a message back saying, hey, you're all set up. And now, programmatically, we can send messages back and forth over the next 24 hours and everything would work totally fine. If those 24 hours uh, expired, then we'd have to get added to the sandbox again. Sandbox again. Got it. So the sandbox is just like a development story, right? After, you know, you've worked through your app and you've created it and it's, you know, communicating you the way that you want it to then you'll publish it somewhere somehow, and then you can actually create you know, interaction between real WhatsApp users. That's exactly right. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hide my phone and I'm gonna walk through this because the way that WhatsApp generally works is even if like you were trying to send a message from WhatsApp, there's some great templates that you would be able to use. Some use cases, people sending out appointment reminders, order notifications, or even, you know, the verification codes for the scenarios of like two-factor authentication or, um, 
a scenario whereby you need to uh, uh, use a service and have to put in a specific code in order to continue to move forward. Yeah. They've got these templates here, but then you can also do two-way messaging, right? So you can go back now, and I told you those 24 hours are now there so we can send messages back and forth. I'm going to send this message. It's just going to be a test message. So I'm going to pull my phone back up, and I'm just going to say test. And now you'll see my messages come in. The sandbox has picked it up and everything is working just as smoothly as we expect it to. I can even send a reply back just directly here from the Twilio console. But instead, we're going to do this from C Sharp code. So I'm really excited to hop over to that now. Great. I think what I'm really excited about for this is this is not just like a one way messaging stream, right? Like you could you could proactively send messages from your application again, just like a text message. Uh, but you could send that to groups, you could send that to individuals, and then I'm sure you can have like some of those more rich capabilities, like you know, images and video and like all that types of stuff we could send to these WhatsApp recipients. That's exactly correct. And what I love most about being able to work with the WhatsApp channel is the code is literally the same. I've pulled okay. my code up in, in Visual Studio, and so I'll show you really quickly just what the difference is between sending a message via SMS and a message via WhatsApp. And okay. you'll laugh at this. Okay. If we were just sending this message through SMS, you see lines 194 and 195 here where we have a to and a from phone number for us to send a message to. Yeah. They literally just have the word WhatsApp appended at the front. That's it. If I took that off and I tried to send a message uh, using the exact same code, it would try to use SMS. Keeping oh. it on, it uses the WhatsApp channel and it works brilliantly. Oh, okay, so that's like just some metadata that signals to Twilio that, hey, I, I want to swap the messaging provider, I'm guessing, to go to WhatsApp versus going to SMS. Yeah, that's exactly correct. It tells Twilio, hey, switch channels. Instead of using SMS or MMS in some scenarios, go ahead and use WhatsApp. And that MMS part is really important because there are some countries that don't do as well with, as, say, the United States does when sending picture messages or video messages. Right. Nice. Nice. So I guess a quick sidetrack really quickly. So we're doing this with WhatsApp, but I'm guessing this means that if not now, maybe sometime in the future, like there might be possibilities to integrate other types of messaging apps. Like I know some folks use Telegram, there's Signal, there's tons of stuff, right? That folks use to send like, you know, um, phone to phone messages. So I'm That's guessing exactly at some point, right. like maybe there might be something that you could just switch the uh, provider, right? And like, or the channel and it could just go to somewhere else. Yes, that's exactly right. I know Twilio is really, really, really um, passionate about making communication easy and seamless across the channels that customers prefer to be contacted on. So there are even some products that we have where you can use Facebook Messenger or you could use, say, smart devices like a Google Assistant or an Amazon Alexa to send information to customers, which is really cool. Yeah, I think what I also like about this is you don't you didn't have to install any additional SDKs or libraries or you're not calling anything different. Like you said, like you're just using the same, you know, five lines of code or so to send messages and you just like change a little bit of um, change a little bit of text, but like it's still doing the same thing. That's exactly right. And so this is your standard ASP.NET Core web application, right? It's just using MVC. We've added the Twilio NuGet package. We've literally just typed in these lines of code, though they were already there, literally just typed in these lines of code. You could come in here and even add a photo to it if you wanted to, and it would absolutely still work. Okay. So if we if we head back over to the um, the sandbox really quickly. So how do you... Like, how do you programmatically respond to messages? Like, we saw how we sent messages, right? Like, are there, like, events and things of that nature that we could use to respond to these things? That's such a great question. So as we were walking through the template here, we could go next, configure your sandbox, and you'll see it says when a message comes in, we can send uh, that message to a URL. And that URL will then actually, um, uh, Twilio will send a post request to that URL, and you'll respond back with, a language that we call Twimmel. It's Twilio's markup language. It's a language that we know how to interpret, but it's an XML-based language. And so you could put things in there like message, uh, hi, I just wanted to respond back to your in initial request. And that would totally work. Twilio would then send that message back on your behalf. Nice. Okay. And it looks like you have some templates down there as well, right? Are those That's 
That's exactly correct. These templates are literally for the scenario where you need to reestablish um, communication with a number that may have already joined your sandbox, but now is trying to connect with you outside of that 24 hour period. We use these templates to make sure that your the, the communication that's happening is not a spam message because that's really important. You know, sometimes businesses get your phone number and then they start sending out messages or people try to spoof numbers and then they start to use the channel to send out um, spam messages. And that's a problem. Got it, got it. I think, and, you know, at first glance when I saw templates, I was just like, oh, I could create this callback and then there's templated messages that I could send too. But you can do that, that too. Was, that, was just, that was just me at first glance. But like listening to you now, like those are separate. They're not related to that postback or that callback that you're, you're talking about. That's exactly right. But you could do that from, from C sharp code if you wanted to. Okay. And so what's really cool about this is I've shown a demo where we would send a message using WhatsApp, but responding back is literally just as simple as setting up an API endpoint and having it send back just the XML that Twilio understands. It's really easy to do. So Corey, I heard you talk about Twimmel, right? And I'm guessing that means Twilio markup language. And I'm guessing it's some type of xml -y type format. I'm guessing some type of structure that you generate that Twilio understands and interprets to be like, okay, well, this is the action you want me to take at this point, yeah. right? Now, do we have any types of libraries or tools um, from a .NET perspective that could help you generate that Twimmel language? Or is that something that folks have to write by hand? Oh, no. It, it's already built into the NuGet package. So what's really cool is if someone does send a text message or a WhatsApp message in and it hits your API, you can literally just say, I'm creating a new messaging response and then append a body or a photo or say update uh, the sender address to that messaging response and then return that messaging response as XML and ASP.NET Core will understand how to process it. And once it gets back to Twilio, Twilio interprets it and performs the actions on your behalf. Great. So I'm guessing we have like some resources and documentation that we could point people towards so they could see exactly how this works. Yeah, that's correct. Over on twilio.com slash docs, we've got both sample code and a number of specific use cases that we can show you for how you would both send a text message as well as uh, respond to an incoming text message or WhatsApp message because the code is literally the same. Nice. Can we take a look at that really quick so folks can see exactly where we go? Definitely. So I've got the docs up here. And as you can see, I'm looking at the programmable SMS quick start for C Sharp and .NET Core. And here's some sample code just here on the right. It looks almost exactly like the code that we had in Visual Studio. Again, the only difference for WhatsApp is you would just append WhatsApp to the front of the phone number. But then if you wanted to see how to respond to an incoming text message, we've got that same sample code here, literally messaging response, create a new message, and then in one of our previous videos, we talked about some helper libraries that you can use when building ASP.NET Core applications with Twilio. This specific sample is actually using it, which is why you see at the top, it says .NET add package Twilio ASP.NET.Core. Using that specific helper library, you can literally just say return Twimmel messaging response. It is that simple. Right. And it also looks like you, you, we were provided with a Twilio controller. Um, which I'm guessing is a, a super class or subclass of the, um, the controller base or like the ASP.NET Core controller class, right? That's exactly correct. That Twilio controller takes care of some of the stuff that the controller base provides for you by default. But then, of course, it also makes it easy for you to, instead of returning an action result, an I action result, you can return a Twimmel result. I was going to say, I was hearing and if you like return a Twimmel result, street, everything so. works as ASP.NET Core expects it to. So Corey, when you were going through that demo, I just imagined all kinds of crazy scenarios that we could do with like machine learning or you know ML.net or cognitive services with like folks responding and and sending like really interesting messages to customers. Uh, do you see a lot of that with you know some of the folks that you interact with and work with? Yeah, it's not unusual for customers or even just individual developers to say like, I want to build something that's like really smart, really cool, that uh, automatically responds on my behalf. And so folks will use different bot frameworks. Even at Twilio, we've got our own bot product called Twilio Autopilot that you can use where you build the code once and you host it with us, build it once, run it across all the channels that your customers prefer to be contacted on. And so it's just really cool to see some of the different things that folks are building when they try to communicate with um, 
different people using Twilio. All right, great, Corey. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop here and we're going to move on to the next episode where you're going to talk to me a little bit about how this whole autopilot thing works. So for everyone that's watching, thanks. Make sure you check out the show notes for all the great resources, the code, the samples, all the documentation about Twilio and rating applications that interact with WhatsApp. And then make sure you tune in for the next one, which is going to be really cool. We're going to see you use autopilot and create some interesting bots and things like that. So yeah. see you next time.